Okay, here I am, out in the woods. And as a filmmaker, um, even though I am sick and potentially aren't, aren't really doing much of anything, I'm going to still show you what filmmakers do when they sick. Um, right now I'm about to go out and scout a location that I might use for a film someday. So that's what we're going to do my week starting. my week. Okay, not yet at the location, but I did stop and notice that there's this nice um, little, like, it's like a dry little riverbank. Like, I'm just imagining, like, if it's like some type of survival type film or, or whatever, you could have someone just crawling up in the riverbank here or walking or stepping up, you know, trying to find water, say if it's some type of apocalyptic film, which a friend of mine wants to do. Um, they could basically, you're going to have them just walk up here. And you have a nice, uh, solid, like, walkway right here to where you can set up the camera, the lighting. And that way you can have the person climb up and you can also have, like, a picture of them just, of, like, an actor just crawling through the rocks and stuff. You can potentially get this done, you know, with maybe, like, a the actor or actors and a, uh, like, a two-man crew, you know, um, holding the camera as well as, you know, setting up the light and keeping the light um, on, on the actor, so... And I like it because, I mean, this pathway uh, is very unlevel, and uh, it's good to have like a level platform. And if you can't carry, with, carry one with you, it's good to have one just already constructed for you. So um, this, isn't, this isn't the area that I want to check out, but this is still an interesting area. I just like the way that this, this little river muddy stream bed is, and just I think it provides a nice little uh, backdrop to a scene. But anyway, on to the real location. Here I am, at the location I wanted to look at, and if you just, if you just see, you got, oh, I'm over here, but you got the nice, peaceful water in this area, and you have a bank down here, and I just think this is just really cool how you like a little stream bank right here, but it's not really like used anymore, and then you have the stream flowing right here. <coughs> Now, I mean, this is like an independent filmmaker's dream almost, if you're thinking, you know, to have like actor or actors, you know, coming up uh, in the water for some type of scene. Maybe they're, you know, running from somebody or something or hiding out. It just depends on what type of scene you're going to be making. And, and as I'm like looking here, you got I got to think about, okay, not only where I would have the actors, but where would I have the crew, um, whether it be me with the camera and someone else with the lighting would we be set up over here and I'd be thinking okay where would I put the camera what type of angles would I want for for a scene in a place like this but I mean this I mean this is just perfect you got you got the water just uh, running all over the place you got the trees just I mean everything is natural formation and foundation is it's just a really nice piece of land and this isn't a park <laughs> Uh, so, but thankfully for independent filmmakers, we usually don't get permits because usually permits cost more than our budget. <laughs> so, usually as an independent filmmaker, you just sneak into the place and may hopefully you get everything filmed before they kick you out. <laughs> before they find out about you and kick you out. Uh, but, like I said, it's just, oh, it's just gorgeous in this place. If, if I were to, you know, be filming a major motion picture and I, and I would have the money for a permit, you know, to spend just days here just using this area and areas like around this uh, undisclosed park. Shh. I'm not going to say what park it is where, and where I live next to where I live at, but it's just, it's, it's such a beautiful location. You really wouldn't need to change anything about it. And I also think about like how, how about say if, say if uh, like you had two actors conversing like in this sandbar right here. Um, and just imagine where you'd have the camera if you'd want to have a conversation You have to have a camera on both sides and and film the conversation at least twice, you know on both ends So you can see their faces and what type of conversation would they be having? What would be the drama of the scene and the story? Um, why would they be here? Where are they going? I mean just all those things you have to consider Yeah, you're 
you're looking into the mind of a filmmaker right now, and this filmmaker's just drooling. I mean, just, just look how clear the water is right here. I mean, that's just incredible how clear it is. It's just, oh, it's great. So, back here at home, and I'm going to show you guys what I usually do during the day if I'm not outside, uh, looking at areas in which to film. I'm usually at my computer, and what I'm usually doing at my computer is a number of things. And one is I could be uh, just going online, looking at YouTube videos, like any anybody where any any videos that like you got filmmaking or instructions on how to how to do things, just to spruce my brain up some more. So that's one thing I do. And another thing I do is I look up. Uh, sound effects as well, and I, sometimes I go to some sites that got like, some like royalty free sounds that people just air, and a lot of times, like, especially on this website, a lot of the sounds are crap, so you have to go through uh, the majority of them to find something. Like, here, let me try this one. That wasn't too bad, it was an explosion with uh, glass debris. That, that sounded kind of cool. Let me try this one. Yeah, that was kind of off. Um, and this is a huge explosion. I hope this isn't too loud. Ah, that wasn't too bad. It's actually more like a cannon than an explosion, so that sounded good. So, I usually just, uh, I mean, for free, I can download like five of the five sounds per month. And so I just able to build my sound collection a little bit from this, you know, month by month, just a little bit, a little bit. Like I said, just the little things to do while I'm sick, I can still, you know, do something. And one of the last things I do is, of course, work on editing video stuff. And actually, this is uh, from week 14. So this was like from a few months ago. And this is a vlog I have not posted yet. We'll be posting sometime soon. And I've just uh, edited some things about it. Because there, um, there's a few weeks that I was, I was really, really sick, so I didn't post air any of these vlogs. So, but I do have like a nature video that I'm going to be posting. And it's just showing like some of the uh, wonderful nature plants. And this is actually in the springtime, so like winter was ending and spring was starting. And so I just had some photo. Priscilla took some photos, so just gathering some photos together and, and making a little video to go with the vlog for uh, for week 14. So like I said, just. Always, always, as a filmmaker, even if you're sick, or if you're not, always find ways to hone and sharpen your skills, and look for new avenues, look for new people. Uh, like I said, just the past weekend I met a guy, he calls himself uh, basically a metal worker, he, he works with all sorts of metals and stuff, and he, he welds things together, and very artistic, very creative, so I'm probably going to get his information to someday maybe use him to work to make props for some of my films. So like I said, you always always a you know get opportunity um, for what for whatever I'm doing and if you're if, you, if what you do isn't filmmaking um, just always remember whatever your dream is always find ways to pursue it and always be constantly um, trying to sharpen your craft and, and keep it going so that's a little view of what I do as a filmmaker during the week and I will see you guys next week